Plants vs. Zombies is one of my favorite games ever created. It's charming, has great style, and it's super fun. The plot is honestly pretty simple, with your neighbor Crazy Dave, yourself, and your army of plants being tasked with defending your house from a horde of zombies. I kind of want to make a note on how the zombies don't act like your typical zombies. They're a lot more cognizant, and they don't act as animalistic. And also, they have a leader named Dr. Zomboss, who is mentally capable enough to construct a giant robot zombie, and he has a PhD. They don't also elaborate on the origins of the apocalypse, but on the menus and such you can see them all coming from a graveyard, so you can assume it's not a virus, but some sort of necromancy or other form of dead raising. They're very focused on consuming your brains, which is a trope that is somewhat widespread, but it contradicts the classic zombie, which just eats whatever it can get its hands on. Little side note again, this trope originated from Return of the Living Dead, which, although similar in title to George Romero's films, was actually written by his former co-writer, John Russo. The lore of PVZ has always concerned me, but my concerns aren't too deep, they're just a few questions. Like, who is Dr. Zomboss? Where did the zombies come from? Was it necromancy like I mentioned before? And is this a full-scale apocalypse, or is your character just being targeted by Dr. Zomboss for no reason? I'm sure at least one of these questions are answered in other PVZ media, but in all honesty, I've only beaten the first game, and I've barely played through the second. Like its plot, PVZ's gameplay is also pretty simple, consisting of three main aspects. Your plants, the zombies, and your sun counter. The goal is to keep the zombies away from your house by using your plants, which require sun to be planted. Plants also have a set timer before being able to be planted again, which safeguards from sun stockpile abuse. In the back, you have a set of safety lawn mowers, which will serve as your last defense if your zombies manage to breach your plant-based defenses. Haha, <laughs> get it? Plant-based defenses like... like plant-based... meat? That was a horrible joke, I'm so sorry. By the end of the main adventure mode, you'll have a myriad of plants at your disposal. Most are unlocked from level to level, but a few, namely the upgrade plants, are unlocked in Crazy Dave's shop, which gets unlocked midway through the third stage? Yeah, the third stage. All but a few zombies have the same basic function, lurching towards your defenses, but some are quicker, some are able to jump over your plants, and some are giant. Some can even spawn more zombies, and of course there's like the bungee zombie, which will drop down and then take one of your plants, but those are few and far between. Contrastly, plants serve a variety of different functions, but the one you'll see the most is simply just killing zombies. I like to characterize plants into three main types, each having a bit of overlap. We have defense plants like walnuts or tall nuts, offense plants like pea shooters and its variants, and support plants like sunflowers, sun shrooms, and magnet shrooms. Also, although these aren't specific types of plants, at least within the categories I've given, there are single-use plants, which either instantly disappear or disappear after fulfilling their purpose, and upgrades plants which are basically planted on top of other plants to give them an upgrade, most simple example being the sunflower becoming the twin sunflower, doubling its sun production. You'll notice there is overlap, which is why I made it a Venn diagram. Uh, let's begin with the offense slash defense category. We have the cactus, also known as the worst plant ever. It's only in the defense category because they can specifically defend against balloon zombies. The same goes for the split pea, but with the minor zombie and maybe some other zombies in very special cases. The rest in the offense plus defense category are all stationary attackers, which typically are used to either set up early game or as a last defense. Yeah, I know in the script it says stationary attackers, but it's less like they're stationary attacking because every single plant is stationary in this game, and more like they're passively affecting the zombies as they come by, such as the squash waiting for a zombie to get close before it'll squish it. The offense category is pretty self-explanatory, but notably, most of the single-use plants, 8 out of 11 of them to be exact, fit into some sort of offensive category. Offensive slash support plants all inflict a status infict? All inflict a status effect whenever they hit an enemy with their projectile, except for blowvers, which blow away the fog and kill balloon zombies. Snow peas and winter melons all inflict slowness, and kernel pults have a chance to stun zombies with their butter. Support plants do a variety of different things. These are basically the miscellaneous wildcard category. Magnet shrooms will steal any metal objects from the enemy, be it helmets, pogo sticks, shields, or even pickaxes. Gold magnets pick up money, marigolds make money, and sunflowers and sun shrooms make sun, naturally. Planters light up the fog, coffee beans wake up sleeping mushroom plants, which are nocturnal for some reason, and grave busters gobble up graves. 
Pots and lily pads serve the express purpose of letting you place plants on the roof and in your pool, respectively. Defense slash support plants are a bit of a mixed bag. Torchwood, garlic, and pumpkin can all sort of serve as shields, but torchwood also lights up the fog and sets peas on fires, making them do more damage. Garlic will force zombies into a different lane, and pumpkins can act as shields that can be planted right on top of other plants. The umbrella leaves shield your plants from bungee zombies and the basketballs tossed by catapult zombies, which funnily enough mirror your own catapult plants, seeing as they're all catapult themed and all appear on the roof. Walnuts and tall nuts are the only purely defensive plants, as they only exist to just get in the way of the zombies. Walnuts can only be eaten, and tall nuts, which have the primary function of being eaten, can also block vaulting zombies, like the pogo zombie. Finally, we have the trifecta, the holy trinity, the plants that serve all three roles. Funnily enough, there's six of them, and six is divided by three. I like how that mathematically all lines up. Spike weeds and spike rocks, which are essentially the same plant, do passive damage whenever zombies walk over them, but they'll also pop the tires and instantly destroy any vehicles that ride over them. Spike rocks are simply more durable whenever it comes to popping tires, as spike weeds will instantly die whenever being ran over, but spike rocks will not. Ice shrooms will do a bit of damage to all zombies on screen, also freezing them in place for a while. As mentioned before, they also inflict slowness, which affects the zombies after they unthaw. They are one of the best plants in the game. Hypno shrooms, on the other hand, aren't the best, but they will get whatever poor zombie that accidentally eats it high as fuck. The zombie now blasted on shrooms will attack his own buddies, thinking that he's on the plant side or something, I don't know. Finally, we have cattails and star fruits, both of which have very wide ranges of attack. Cattails will attack whoever they can find on screen with their homing spikes, and star fruits have five different areas they can attack from, which, although not the entire screen, still covers quite a large area. Both of these abilities are so amazing that I genuinely see no choice to put them anywhere but in this category. I'm being serious. They have lots of uses. Not just do they kill, but they can also help save plants that are getting attacked, star fruits can help deal with the minor zombies, and generally they're just super fucking good. It's like they're specifically designed to be this good. Whenever I say that like support plants have miscellaneous effects, their miscellaneous effect is being able to hit whoever the hell they want. And it's kind of insane just how good these guys are. Now that we've done categorizing everything, I'd like to take a second to actually go over the balance of the plants. There's a pretty good variety, although a few get overshadowed. Cacti are just absolutely horrible, and thanks to the blover, the cacti and planterns are basically made useless. The marigold and gold magnet are ever only really useful if you're trying to farm money, and I like to farm money in minigames, which means I never use them ever. Sea shrooms, which admittedly are quite useful, have such a large recharge rate that I just never use them. I just use lily pads with mushrooms instead. N normal puff shroom mushrooms, to clarify. Scaredy shrooms would be a nice alternative to puff shrooms if they didn't cower in fear like little bitches whenever zombies got close. They're supposed to be like an inverse where they're strictly long range while the puff shrooms are strictly short range, and that would be acceptable. But they also cost 25 sun as opposed to 0 sun, so it just makes me never want to use them at all. Three Peters are a fun novelty and certainly are useful, but they are just a little too pricey for me to like using them. And Split Peas are basically invalidated by Magnet Shrooms, and also the Star Fruits, who both do a better job at controlling minor zombies. Now, otherwise, the balancing is actually quite nice, with some plants being a clear progression path, such as Walnuts to Tallnuts and Pumpkins, or Pea Shooters to Repeaters and Snow Peas. While walnuts and pea shooters are invalidated, they are seemingly invalidated intentionally in order to match the ramp up in difficulty while also giving you an extra layer of choice within the given archetypes. In the pea shooters case of just being a basic attacker, you can choose between faster attacks or same speed attacks with status ailments, and for the walnuts case being the basic shield, you can choose a bulkier walnut that can block vaulters like the pogo zombie, or you can choose the pumpkin which saves space. Personally, I like to use both for both of these situations, but still, you can choose, pick and choose, and get real creative with them, and I like that. In all other situations, plants all fill clear roles, but they don't exactly overshadow each other, and they all have their own pros and cons, meaning that you can pick and choose and specify to your liking. For example, cherry bombs, doom shrooms, and jalapenos are all single-use insta-kills, but they each have their own pros and cons, like I mentioned before. Cherry bombs deal in a smaller radius with a price of 50 sun, while Doom Shrooms, which deal in a higher radius, also cost 125 sun, and they leave a crater which cannot be planted in. 
On the other hand, jalapenos, which cost the same as doom shrooms, will completely erase an entire row rather than a radius around themselves. And they have the added benefit of clearing any slate left by the zombonis. Sun shrooms cost less than sunflowers, but also start producing 15 sun rather than 25. Of course, also being mushrooms, they are nocturnal and have to be awoken during the daytime. They kind of did this because during nighttime, sun doesn't fall from the sky, which means that having a cheaper alternative for sun production is kind of helpful. Puff shrooms, fume shrooms, and gloom shrooms, which are all basically, they are just begging to be turned into an evolutionary line in Pokemon. In fact, they kind of are a little bit. It's, you know what, Eve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it a little. So many plants in this game are just begging to be turned into Pokemon. But that's besides the point. I'm only going to touch on that. If I, I could go, I could make a whole video on turning plants into Pokemon from Plants vs. Zombies. It would be great, but that's besides the point. Puff Shrooms are short range and completely free, whereas Fume Shrooms, while being short range as well, can bypass screen door shields, but also cost 75 sun. Gloom Shrooms are a direct upgrade to Fume Shrooms. They're short range, but they attack in the rainies all around themselves, almost like the attack shooter in Balloon's Tower Defense. Like I said, they're all basically direct upgrades. I know that Gloom Shroom is literally an upgrade plant, but the Fume Shroom is also basically an upgrade from the Puff Shroom. I would love to see these guys made into a Pokemon line. Hypno Shrooms, which for whatever reason have to be awoken during the daytime, despite their entire purpose being to be eaten, I have no clue how that works. They aren't the best, but they work pretty well against Disco Zombies, making them even summon some of their own buddies. So if you infect one Disco Zombie with your Hypno Shroom, it'll summon four zombies to fight for you as well, which is pretty nice. They cost 75 sun and will dispatch a single zombie, whereas Squashes cost 50 sun and they'll dispatch a potential for multiple zombies, but usually it's just one single zombie. They're both quite similar, and they're also both quite similar to the Potato Mine which serves as a good alternative as well. It costs 25 sun less than the squash for a grand total of 25 sun. And its downside is that it takes a second for the little spud bomb to be primed, meaning it serves as a better trap for minor zombies or a good setup tool or a good final barrier, but you, got, you kinda gotta use it sparingly. Tangle Kelp is a better potato mine, costing the same while not needing the time to cook, but it's also locked to the water, sadly. The catapults do an amazing job at not just differentiating themselves from each other, but also serving as an alternative to the pea shooter family. The cabbage pult is twice as slow as the pea shooter, but it does double the damage. The kernel pult, although typically lobbing weaker corn kernels, will occasionally lob a large slab of butter, which not just does more damage, but also stuns the enemy. The melon pult, which unlike the other two costs 300 sun as opposed to 100 sun, does massive damage, as you would expect from projectile melons, as well as splash damage. Keep in mind, for another 200 sun, you can upgrade the melon pult to the winter melon, which adds the slowness effect as well. Something else I want to kind of touch on, the catapults are canonically brothers, with the kernel pult being the oldest, which is kind of hard to believe, and the cabbage pult being the youngest, which is also kind of weird, I didn't really expect that. Regardless, it's absolutely hilarious, I love that. I would think that the watermelon, the melon pult would be the oldest and the kernel pult would be the youngest, but whatever. Other plants will just fulfill niche roles, like the aforementioned spikeweed, garlic, torchwood, grave buster, and a few others. These don't have any alternative analogs and can really be used at will, typically to counter a specific zombie. And some of these plants are better suited to having strategies built around them, such as the garlic, which, in funneling zombies into certain lanes, can pair nicely with the gloom shroom or starfruit. There are a few plants that steal the show, but most of those are basically required, like the sunflower, lily pad, and pot. And the rest, while overpowered, still don't completely overshadow everybody else like you would expect. The starfruit's absolutely great, as I said before, but its angles kind of require you to put it in the forefront, which means you're going to want to usually get a little backup defense set up before you actually place the starfruits down, so you don't have to risk them getting gobbled up and just never getting a defense set up with them. Cattails are absolutely overpowered, but that said, they can only be used on two stages and are only able to get unlocked after you get Crazy Dave's Magic Taco on the second of the two stages, being Nighttime Pool, also known as Fog. Note that I said able to be unlocked, because you still have to scrounge together $10,000 to unlock it in Crazy Dave's shop, which means chances are you'll have to grind mini games for enough money to unlock it unless you skipped on all other purchases and got kind of lucky. In other game modes besides adventure mode, however, you're going to be using cattail a lot, assuming you're on a pool level. Same thing with starfruit, but just in general.
PVZ has some great progression, encouraging you to get creative and switch up your playstyle, thanks to a combination of level gimmicks and new zombies you must face, which also helps a lot in keeping you from just using the same plants over and over again, except for the aforementioned starfruit. The first stage starts off simple with just a front yard, some basic plants, and a few simple zombies to combat. In fact, the very first level has you defending a single lane with a pea shooter and nothing else. The first stage is also one of three to include a minigame, this one being Walnut Bowling, which is amazing. Every stage will end in one final onslaught with a conveyor belt sending you plants you can instantly place, typically resulting in an army of plants having to defend from a torrential onslaught of zombies. They aren't particularly challenging, at least the first few aren't, but they serve as a great climax, especially with the special music that plays for those levels. The second stage introduces some nocturnal shrooms. Shrooms? Shrooms? Excuse me. The second stage introduces the nocturnal shrooms, as well as graves which can spawn zombies. Some more threatening zombies, such as the screen door, disco, and football zombie are introduced, and we get our next minigame, Whack-A-Zombie, which is just whack-a-mole, but with zombies. In addition, sun won't fall from the sky during night time, making the stage and the later fog stage, which is also at night, slightly more difficult. The third stage, known as pool, takes place in the backyard, requiring you to use a lily pad in order to place land plants in the water. That said, not all plants need to be placed in the water, as there's a total of three, a measly three, plants besides the lily pad that can be placed in the water. Those include the tangle kelp, cattail, and sea shroom, and the only one you get in this stage, besides the lily pad of course, is the tangle kelp. We get a larger variety of plants, including some of those alternatives I mentioned, like the squash or the three-peater. And we also get even more zombies, like the dolphin zombie, the water zombie, and of course, my least favorite. No, it's not my least favorite. It's just the bane of my existence, really. The Zomboni. Personally, this is where I think the main adventure mode gets good, partially because of the awesome music. It's my favorite, kind of tied with the roof. The music really ties this game together. I'm going to touch on the music later. Additionally, this is where we see our final minigame in Adventure Mode, known as Big Trouble Little Zombie, where we just have smaller, faster zombies. This is also the stage where we unlock Crazy Dave's shop, which is his van. His shop is inside of his van. There, he'll sell us repeater and sunflower upgrades alongside pool cleaners and rakes to help take out the zombies, and more sleet slots. Sleet slots. Seed slots. Jesus Christ. Stage 4 is the aforementioned stage known as Fog. Also, I like to call it nighttime pool, but the wiki calls it fog, so whatever. And things get even more mixed up here, with the titular fog covering half the screen. If that wasn't annoying enough, only three of the damn plants on the stage are worthwhile, being the last three you get, the starfruit, the pumpkin, and the magnet shroom. Even worse are the goddamn pogo zombies, the jack-in-the-box zombies, balloon zombies, and the miners, all of the new zombies, which are dreadful to handle. This all culminates in the final level where we get hit with a thunderstorm. There's no awesome, mu awesome? There's no awesome music, only darkness, rain, the occasional thunderclap, and jack-in-the-box music. You can't see half the time, and it takes a lot of the entertainment out. Fog is my least favorite stage. I think they kind of shit the bed with it. It got bad whenever they decided to start putting fog in. It got worse whenever they re revealed that Crazy Dave was the cause of the fog. Pisses me off. Balloon zombies aren't that bad, but you know, it's just... Whatever. Luckily, the game recovers quite a bit with the final stage, the roof. Naturally, this is the most challenging, but it doesn't feel like a tedious slog like the fog level. The roof wasn't the best for me in my most recent playthrough, thanks to the catapult zombie really fucking me over. But regardless, I know deep down, it's great, the music's awesome, the plants are awesome, and the zombies scare me. The latter zombie eats like a fucking maniac. The catapult zombie, I just explained, he's a cock munch. The bungee zombie is a douche, and the gargantuan, gargantuar, is just a real big dude, and he's being controlled by a little disgusting fucking gremlin that he'll like toss at you, it's absurd. Overall, it's a damn good set of levels. The gimmick here is that the roof is slanted, meaning you'll need catapults lest you overextend too early. It's a bit obvious that they're trying to force you to incorporate some variety, but the catapults make up for it in just being adorable and satisfying to watch in action. Just watch them get pelted by that cabbage. The butter, the melons, the corn, watch it. The sound effects, the watching them fly in the air, it's all quite satisfying. I like it a lot. 
In the end, we face Dr. Zomboss, who personally writes us a note with his grievances. All the other notes have horrible handwriting and grammar, so this note's a little funny because Zomboss writes in very neat cursive, and he uses quite elaborate grammar. So, you know, the juxtaposition's funny. It's a surprise. Then Crazy Dave gets fucking kidnapped. Oh, Jesus Christ. And there's a mech on the roof. The music's great. The final battle's awesome. It utilizes ice shrooms and also jalapenos and the catapult brothers in order to defeat Zomboss, who will toss zombies, RVs, and even balls of ice and fire at uh, He'll also come down at you, and then that's whenever you can freeze him and start lobbing a bunch of goddamn cabbage and shit at him. It's great and also quite satisfying. And overall, it's a great ending to the game. After you defeat Zomboss, you'll get treated to a dance party, and you'll make peace with the zombies for the time being, and also fully unlock the new features, like the Cobb Cannon, which, though more powerful, costs a complete total of 700 sun, and also the Imitator, which will mock any plant at the cost of a seed slot, and it effectively cuts the recharge time in half. It costs the same, and it does the exact same thing. The only difference is that it takes up a seed slot, and it, yeah, it basically just helps you plant more of a specific plant if you want to use that a lot. Like, say, sea shrooms, for example. They have a very long recharge time, so putting the imitator onto a sea shroom will make you able to plant even more sea shrooms. You also get the Zen Garden, which is essentially a money farm. And alongside it, you get the rest of the puzzles, the mini games, which you can unlock a few of before adventure mode, but you get the rest of the mini games after adventure mode. And you also get survival mode, which lets you play on the previous stages for multiple rounds, with the plants you placed before staying between those rounds, which I like a whole lot. And finally, you can get the tree of wisdom, which I don't, it, according to the game, it spits out hints. I don't, I, I just, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I want to go over the mini games for a second here. Uh, there's lots of them, and there's also puzzles, which are basically just more in-depth minigames. The few I'd like to touch on are Vase Breaker, which is one of the puzzles, what, more, one of the more in-depth minigames. It involves you breaking vases to either release zombies or seed packs, consisting of ten levels, ending in Endless Vase Breaker, which is just, you go on and on seeing as long as you can go. There's also I Zombie, which this is where the whole part about you making pieces with the zombies comes in, because Crazy Dave is like, hey, uh... I'm letting the zombies use your lawn as a practice thing. Don't worry, though. It's all good. And then you choose the zombies that will attack a set of plants that are set up. And it's like, it's a more of a puzzle. It's a lot more of a puzzle than Vase Breaker is. But it's just somewhat interesting. It's a very fun mode. And I like that they included it because being able to play as the zombies, that's pretty interesting. And you can do that a little more in depth in the uh, console and DS version. But still, it's nice It's nice to have on PC as well. And there's some other ones, like Zombotany, where zombies will have plants on their head, and they share those same attributes. For example, pea shooter zombies will shoot peas at your plants, walnut zombies will take more damage, and jalapeno zombies will explode into flames, like the jalapeno plant. One last minigame I'd like to make note of is The Last Stand, where you're given 5,000 sun to defend from an initial wave of zombies, and then given a little bit of sun every next round to refortify. Uh, here's a clip of me using only cattails, it doesn't end too well. Overall, I just love this game. It's very charming, it has lots of style, obviously all the plants are adorable, the zombies are funny, it's got quite a few comedic moments, honestly. The music's just awesome. The music is super good. Dude, the music is outstanding. Bop after bop, beat after bop after banger after, it's just so good. The music is great, even in Plants vs. Zombies 2, which I'm gonna touch on in a second, the music's great. That's one thing, Plants vs. Zombies always has great music. I have lots of fun with this game. No matter what I'm playing it on. I played it on my DS, played through it on my DS. That was great. I love that they put it on DS. The fact that there's a fully functional version of this game on the DS is something that I kind of take for granted, and most people probably don't even know. There's also the Xbox version, which has two-player, which I wish was on PC. And then, of course, there's the PC version, which is great for just playing. Uh... There is one issue, though. And that was after Plants vs. Zombies came out, you know, you play through it all and there's not much else to do. I waited for a while, as did many other people, and like those people, I had pretty high hopes. Very high hopes for a second Plants vs. Zombies game. And then Plants vs. Zombies 2 came out. I haven't even gotten past the second world in Plants vs. Zombies 2. 
It's riddled with microtransactions, and it turned me away from the Plants vs. Zombies franchise as a whole. I haven't touched Garden Warfare, Garden Warfare 2, nor Battle for Neighborville, and I definitely have not touched the third game or the bizarre Chinese versions of the game. Yeah, there's a version of Plants vs. Zombies 1 that's Chinese exclusive with even more content, and it has not came to the West at all. EA ruined everything. Fuck you, EA. They fired the original developer, cut out a lot of other people too. They're the worst. The 3D games might even actually be good, but I may never know. EA tore this game from its creator, raped it, bastardized it, and then set it on fire. Almost nothing has made me hold more contempt for a single game development studio than EA's handling of Plants vs. Zombies. Chances are, we will never get a game like the first Plants vs. Zombies again, but I'm okay with that. I still love what we have, and luckily there are mods being made that make the games better. Like, example, Plants vs. Zombies 2 Ecclesi, which is supposedly supposed to make Plants vs. Zombies 2 actually bearable. I really hope that that actually turns out well. And also, for whatever reason, it's called Ecclesi and not Eclipse. That really tripped me up the first time. The final note I'd like to end this video on is a high one. The music. Just listen to the music. Go listen to the music right now. I love the music. I've been playing the game's music this entire video. It's so good, and I just, I love the game. I mean, just, if you haven't played it already somehow, just go fucking do it. Sorry for all the cursing. Finally, time for me to add in the forward, or I, not forward, afterward, or something, I, no, forward comes with whatever. It took me a while to get this video done, mostly because it took me a while to actually get myself to get working on it because of ADD as so. hell. But that's besides the point. Had fun making it. Um, I may make another if people like it. If you do like this, if you did like this, please leave whatever criticisms you have. Tell me what you think I should change up, what I could would do better. And also, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Make my numbers go up. Give me the serotonin. The dopamine makes me make the videos. The serotonin makes me keep making the videos. I'm being extremely literal. But I'm also being extremely honest. Anyway, I truly do hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you all next time. See ya.